Hey there, tech enthusiasts. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a classic showdown in the Linux world. Linux Mint versus Ubuntu. If you're thinking about switching to Linux, or maybe just curious about these two popular distros, stick around. By the end of this video, you'll know how different they are, what makes them unique, and which one might be the right pick for you. Let's jump right in. First up, let's talk about their similarities. Both Linux Mint and Ubuntu have their roots in Debian, a powerful and widely used Linux distro. This means they use the same type of package files, called DEB files, to install programs. In fact, if you're following instructions to install software on Ubuntu, chances are they'll work perfectly on Linux Mint too. Pretty convenient, right? Oh, and if you're a fan of the Linux terminal, or want to become one, You'll be happy to know that most commands for managing repositories or installing software are exactly the same. So, in many ways, they're kindred spirits under the hood. But when it comes to the user experience, things get interesting. Let's talk GUI graphical user interface. Ubuntu's default desktop environment is called GNOME. It's sleek, modern, and, let's be honest, it looks a bit like Mac OS. If you love that clean, minimalistic vibe, GNOME might be right up your alley. On the flip side, Linux Mint's default desktop environment, Cinnamon, feels a lot like Windows. It's intuitive and familiar, especially if you're coming from Microsoft's ecosystem. There's also a lightweight version called XCFE, perfect for older laptops. It's a great way to breathe new life into aging hardware, so it really comes down to your personal taste, Mac-like elegance or Windows-style practicality. Technically, you could swap these desktop environments, put GNOME on Mint or Cinnamon on Ubuntu, but honestly, it's more trouble than it's worth. Each OS is optimized for its default environment, so you're better off sticking to what's recommended. Now let's talk software. Linux Mint uses a software manager, a neat little tool that organizes programs into categories for easy browsing. It pulls packages from the Mint repository, and with just a few clicks, you can install almost anything you need. Plus, there are some cool free Linux games in there. Who doesn't love that? Ubuntu, on the other hand, has its app store, managed by Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu. It's polished, offers a lot of software options, and keeps track of everything you install, even programs added through the terminal. That's handy, but you're kind of locked into using it for most things. Mint gives you a bit more flexibility, letting you manage your system in a way that feels more open-ended. A quick note, though, Ubuntu's App Store usually has more up-to-date versions of software compared to Mint's repository. For example, when I tried installing Slack, Ubuntu had the latest version ready to go, while Mint, not so much. It's a small but noticeable difference for those who want the latest and greatest. Okay, now let's talk about support. Since Linux is open source, there's no official helpline. Instead, you rely on community forums or online guides. Both Mint and Ubuntu have active and helpful communities. That said, Ubuntu's is bigger and Canonical's documentation is top-notch. So if you run into a problem, you might find Ubuntu has the edge when it comes to finding fixes. That said, I've used Linux Mint for over a decade and Ubuntu for around five years. Almost every issue I've had was solvable, eventually, thanks to both communities. And the journey of troubleshooting often leads to learning more about Linux which is a bonus in itself. So, which one should you choose? Well, it really boils down to taste. If you prefer a Windows-like experience, go with Linux Mint. If you're drawn to a Mac-like interface and a slightly larger support ecosystem, give Ubuntu a shot. Here's my advice. Try both. You can test them out on a virtual machine or even directly in your browser. No commitment, just exploration. Who knows? You might even discover a third distro that's perfect for you. That's it for today's comparison. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer, or if you're using a different Linux distro altogether. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more tech content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.